Hi guys, welcome to this session on Microsoft Excel. In this module, I want to explain how you can create a little spreadsheet to track COVID-19 test results. So as you can see, I've created a four month projection and I have conditional formatting coloring up to indicate whether somebody has tested positive for red and negative for green. So if they're positive, the cell will go red and then if you test them again, and it's negative you type n and it goes green so these are the two keys at the top negative n for green positive p for red down the bottom there you've got a total an auto sum going up there and so it's not auto sum it's count if working out how many tests has been in that week and then below that you've got a count if to see whether there's any negatives or how many negatives so for example, if I type negative, negative, negative there, it's counting that there's been three tests and there were three negatives, four tests, three in, uh, negatives and one positive. So this is the um, conditional formatting coloring up and then these, you've counted function there and there counting for negatives and positives and then just a, a general count A, which counts whether the cell is blank or not to give you a total number of tests. So that's a very quick look at a simple spreadsheet that you can use to keep a track on who's been tested, when, and what the results were. Now to create that from scratch, let's just create a new sheet. Uh, I'm not gonna do everything, so I'm just gonna cheat a little bit. I'll copy these names. Copy these names across. Um, I think it was in sheet started in six, yeah. So at the top there, I want um, week one to five, pull that across to five and do emergence center on the top row to emergence center, Jan. And then if I put the borders on this bit, I, now I've got this up here. Um, it's normally in this little drop down. You can select all borders there, but if you use it all the time, like I do, you can just add it to the top there. And then I've put that on. Now, if I highlight this, it will replicate all the way across to April. And then I can do different color schemes for different months. Again, I've got the paint pot at the top, but I'll just use this one now, seeing as it's there. Uh, pick a different color, just to make this stand out a little bit. And then what I need to do is actually I need to bring this down because I, put, I need to put the scale at the top there. So I've highlighted both of those sitting with this icon and just pulling that down in line with name. Just double check that's in the same layout. It's just above name. So I'll push it back up one. Okay. Unmerge my cells, just remerge those, just pull that across. I don't have to do it four times to put them back, to knock the colours off, put the colours back on. And then what I want to do now is just put a grid on the actual spreadsheet so that the um, everything prints out with the grid lines on. So I'll come down in to do the totals like so, put the grid line on. I have to put the grid line on this bit as well. Now I want to do test results at the top there. And then we've got negative and positive underneath. So if it's going to be negative, I want it to flag green. If it's going to be positive, I want it to flag red. And I will put an N in there and a P in that one. So if you type P for positive, it's going to go red. Now what I need to do is highlight all the area that I'm likely to fill in. Left myself a few spaces there. Conditional formatting, manage rules is where I need to go. And then I need to set two rules that's going to pick up these colors. So first, format only cells that contain change this between to equals to and then type n so if it's n format green okay to that okay new rule second one down 
if it's p equal to p, which is positive, format red, okay, okay to that. Okay, again, then just test it, type n, goes green, type p, goes red. Now, the totals, so totals at the bottom, and then we want how many negatives and how many positives we've got. Now, I'll just put a negative in there. So it picks up the word negative from above. So you may want to move that, but I'm just going to delete that off. So it just does the N. And then I'll do the same for a positive. Delete the positive off. Now, count A is the function I'm going to use there. So it's going to be equals count A. Open the bracket and select your range. Coming all the way down to this cell just in case I add some extra people. That's what I want. Tells me there are two tests in that column. If I just do another one, now there's three, so that works okay. Now, how many negatives and how many positives? This is where I need to use the count if function. So equals count if, open the bracket, select the range, comma, and the criteria is gonna be for the negatives, this cell, which I just need to lock with the dollar signs. Just F for that, so it's going to lock that cell, close the bracket, click the tick. So there are two negatives in that. And then if I just do that again for you, equals count if, open bracket, select your range, little comma, Select the criteria. So you could type the criteria if you wanted to. If you didn't want to use the dollar signs. And there's one of those. Now all of these work. So I can just pull these all the way across to the end. And you could do totals for this side. Actually adding up the four week period. Obviously if you're going to do this for the year. You'd have 12 months. So what should happen, in, happen now is. If I click the grid on that bit. And this little bit. So just tidy it up a little bit. Wherever you type P, there's a positive test. Then they'd have a ne another test. It might be negative or they might have a positive, positive, then negative. This is counting it up below. So you've got a bit of an idea what's happening regards your staff and how long they're likely to be in terms of isolating themselves. So hopefully this has been of use to you and some of you can employ this sort of data to your workplace and I will see you on the next one. Thank you for your time.